Hello and welcome to the latest PV News. This week we bring you special features including the emerging Middle East and North Africa market and the expected impact on the PV industry from further declines in polysilicon prices. Also on this week's programme, the top 10 cell producers of 2011, Haiti's plans for solar adoption and SIG's thin film firms emerge into the mainstream. A new bottom-up analysis of the polysilicon industry supports growing consensus that polysilicon prices will continue to set record lows this year as overcapacity continues. This supply-demand imbalance will push producers to lower contract prices closer to the level of manufacturing costs at 20 US dollars per kilogram and will force higher cost manufacturers to exit the industry. A boon for module manufacturers as they are projected to save approximately 20 US cents per watt, which could bring module prices below 70 cents per watt in 2012, according to GTM research. Established players such as Hemlock Semiconductor, Waker, GCL Solar, REC, OCI and Tokiyama are expected to weather this extended period of pricing weakness. But contract prices will have to fall, impacting margins. Despite a tumultuous year for solar cell and thin film manufacturers, the top 10 rankings for 2011 saw only a few changes in position from 12 months ago. According to new research contained within the latest MPD SolarBuzz PV Equipment Quarterly Report. Chinese and Taiwanese manufacturers maintained their prominence, securing eight out of the top 10 positions. But the number one position in 2011 goes to First Solar, the only thin film manufacturer on the list. First Solar was said to have enacted on production to meet its strong in-house project pipeline, setting out a downstream integrated business model that few others have been able to follow. The strong demand for high-quality CSI cells from downstream module manufacturers has retained Taiwan producers Motec, Gintec and Neo Solar Power in the top 10 list. Another highlight was the emergence of Trina Solar. At a time of flight to quality, the success of Trina transitioning from a module only to a cell and module leader was said to be a consequence of the company's focus on cost structure. The top 10 manufacturers now account for 40% of global PV cell production, down four percentage points from a year ago. 2011 was seen as a breakout year for SIG's module shipments and installations, generating 1.2 gigawatt of demand, according to a new report. Lux Research is forecasting the SIG's market to reach 2.3 gigawatt in 2015, generating $2.35 billion in revenue. Following recent success with supply deals for utility-scale PV projects, Japanese supplier Solar Frontier was said to be a clear winner with a solid position in the dominant quadrant and was the only firm to earn a strong positive take. However, Lux expected Global Solar, Avancis and Solibro to emerge as bankable players but be consolidation targets. They also believe that Steon, Mia Solar and Nuvosun can emerge as champions though noting that success was dependent on their ability to ramp capacity and maintain high utilisation rates. However, this could be said of almost all six firms. A new report has highlighted significant energy demands within the emerging markets in the Middle East and North Africa, and the crucial role of solar technologies in meeting that demand. Importantly, the levelized cost of electricity from solar PV in typical Middle East and North Africa climates is estimated at 15.4 cents per kilowatt hour at an installed capital cost of $2.50 per watt, making it competitive with fossil fuels at various peak demand points. In countries such as Lebanon, northern UAE countries, Jordan and Morocco where there is little domestic gas production and high use of oil for power, Solar power is said to save significantly on fuel costs and enhance energy security. In countries such as Saudi Arabia, Kuwait and Syria, where there is significant domestic gas but insufficient to meet demand, PV can free up domestic oil consumption for export. But the report produced by Manar Consulting, commissioned by the Emirates Solar Industry Association and sponsored by international consultancy firm PwC, shows there are challenges 
not least the political fragility in many parts of Middle East and North Africa, which will affect the economic viability of solar power in individual countries. The region remains one to watch in 2012. And finally, Haiti President Martelli has recently said if a country wants to talk about development, it's imperative to talk about energy and electricity. Haiti's president hopes to double the number of rural households that receive electricity within two years through loans to buy solar kits. Dubbed Give Me the Light, Give Me Life, the program is part of a 45 million US dollar energy package that aims to bring electricity to families that live in two of the most remote corners of the country, the Grand Anse and the Northwest Province. Organisations such as Solar Electric Light Fund have also been very active in Haiti. Following the earthquake two years ago, over half a million Haitians are still living in nearly 800 tent camps, making the need for energy in the country critical to the reconstruction of much of the devastated southern half of Haiti. Well, that's it from us for this week. Next time, we take a special look into growth in installations in the Asia-Pacific region and the rise of China's domestic PV market. Thanks for watching. <laughs>